Okay, welcome back. So let's look at some examples here applying the ideas of our measures of center. Alright, so once again we're gonna be working with our high temperature data and we're just gonna find some of the various measures of center. Alright, so we'll find all those and then we'll, we'll answer the really important question what's the most appropriate measure here to use for this data set. All right, we've seen this data set before, we're pretty familiar with it. So let's just play around with it a little bit and find. Now first we're going to look at finding these manually using either some Excel functions or there's, there's lots of different ways we can do this. So let's, let's look at our data over here in Excel. All right, so I've got my states, my high temperatures. And there's, there's a lot of different ways I can find the average here. Um, one way we can do it, you know, we can just use the sum function in Excel. So sum those guys up. Um, we know we have 50 states, but if you didn't know what your n was, you could use this count function. So I'm going to count how many observations I have here. should come out to 50. All right, good. And then to find my average, I could take my sum divided by my count. Super easy. Or, of course, Excel has just a built-in average function, right? Rather than having to sum and count and then divide, right? So those should agree. All right, easy enough. Um, so some other things I could do in Excel that, so there's my mean or my average. Now to find my median, I'm trying to do things here without functions first. To find my median, there's a few different ways I can do this. We could, we could sort this thing, sort from smallest to largest. You could count to your median. I mean, that's fine. But you know, I think if you're, if you're planning on counting to your median, a nice tool to be able to do that over in mini tab, if I go to stat, sorry, if I go to graph, stem and leaf plot, if I have a stem and leaf plot of my data, it makes it super easy to count to the mean, right? Remember, it keeps this cumulative frequency over here on the left. So that tells me my median is located somewhere here. I could count and find it. Now, this may be kind of overkill because if I can make a stem and leaf plot in mini tab, I might as well just have Minitab calculate the median for me. But it's a nice tool to use. Um, we'll show you how to do this in Excel. We've got a median function. So I can go median, highlight all 50 of my observations. Turns out our median is 114. We'll see if Minitab agrees. Um, there's also a mode function in Excel. Um, we can look at the mode single first. That's just going to return me my single one mode. So I highlight that. My single mode is 118. So those are just a couple ways we can kind of play around with the data and do some of this stuff manually in Excel if you want to. But of course, if we're if we're already sitting in front of a computer, you know, stem and leaf plot is a helpful way of doing this. Or you can just make have Minitab do it for us through its descriptive statistics output here. All right, so we can do that real quick. Let's make sure Minitab agrees with what we found. So if I go to Stat, Basic Statistics, Display, click my variable in Statistics. I don't want anything except for median, mean. And we can even find that uh, that mid range if we want, and our mode. So let's see what mini tab gives us. So my my minimum and maximum, we can use that to find my mid range. Um, that means that my mid range would be two thirty four divided by two, or one hundred and seventeen. Um, so we got that. Our mean. Our median, our mode, all agrees with what we found in Excel. And it also has a nice feature here. It tells you well, how many observations that we have for our mode. So there were five repeats of 118. 
Okay. So the next thing I want to look at is finding the mean of a frequency table here. Okay, so say we don't have the raw data, but we've got a frequency distribution of the number of hours a group of students watches Netflix per week. All right now, I don't think this is this is just made up data. Okay, but we want to find the mean of this frequency table. So remember the idea is like th like this single individual, this person, they're in the five and a half to ten and a half class, right? But we don't know whether they're closer to five and a half. They could be six hours. They could be ten hours. We're not really sure. So we're going to assume. Well, let's just say this one person is right in the middle at say eight. Okay, we're going to do that for each class and get our result from there. So this is something that we actually do have to do in Excel. All right. So maybe one of the first things I want to do is find my total. So I'm going to use this sum function. All right. Now I've got my classes in an interesting situation here. I have it here five to ten and a half. All right. Now to find my midpoint, I think the easiest way to do this. You could go through and you could type your upper class limit and your lower class limit for each one, and it wouldn't be the end of the world. But here's kind of a cool thing you can do in Excel. If I go, if I go here to data, text to columns, I can tell it delimited with other, and I can put this little dash in there, and that'll tell me move all the data in this one column, split it into two columns by that dash. All right, so there's kind of a nice thing to do. So this is my lower class limit, this is my upper class limit, and that's going to make it really easy to find my class midpoint. Okay, so my class midpoint is going to be this guy plus this guy divided by 2. So my class midpoint there is 8, and there we go. Alright, so I need to take so according to my formula, I need to take each class midpoint, multiply it by its frequency. And so do that for each one. 8 times 1 is 1, 13 times 2, 26, and so forth. Sum those guys up. And then take that sum, divide by my total frequency here, and, and I get 24 and a half. All right, so that's... That's probably the easiest way to do it here. Now, another way to do this is let's calculate our relative frequencies. Okay, so remember to find a relative frequency. You take your frequency and you divide by your total. My total is 20 here. I want to be able to drag this down, so I need to lock in 20. All right, so I'm going to put dollar signs around that. Drag it down. Now I've got the relative frequency for each column. You can then take the class midpoint, multiply it by the relative frequency, do that, add those guys up, and that should agree with exactly what we found doing it the other way. Okay, so both of these numbers agree. So there's just a couple different ways of doing it there. Okay, so here's our results, and according to our formula, there's what we get. All right. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.